I want to share a calendar tip with you. So I have this organization, Girl Guides, that I'm a part of, uh, which requires a lot of attention to forms being submitted, uh, policies, camps and events. There's lots of multi-date events that I need to keep on top of, and it's a lot to remember. So I have a girl guide calendar where I keep all of my events. Now the thing is a single event might have multiple due dates. So there might be the time that we plan the actual meeting. And then there's another due date for when the first round of forms are due. And then there's the actual event itself. So in some cases, there's actually multiple dates for a singular event. And I just wanted to show you what that can look like. So I've got this calendar here and I've got meetings. And so, Tonight we had a meeting about planning the Christmas camp. So if I open this up, you'll actually see that there's three dates here. So there's the meeting date, which was today. There's the forms due date, which is on November 16th. And then the actual event itself is on December 6th. And then I've tagged this and then I've sort of tucked away all of our planning in there. Um, so we've got that for future reference. And then as more and more planning happens, I can add those details here and any forms that relate to this. Um, this is just a pretty, you know, pretty simple calendar. There's no relational databases happening here. The great thing about this is you can sort your calendars by, um, by a number of different fields. So in this case, if I look at um, calendar by, this particular view is being organized by meetings. So this is only going to show me everything that has a meeting date. So here there's a meeting date of November 30th. So that shows up on November 30th. This one meeting 24th. Um, so that's where this one shows up. But if I switch this up and I just want to see when the forms are due, um, you'll see there's no nothing on this end of the calendar. And I can see that the forms were due November 1st for that Pathfinder party. And then Christmas camp is um, forms are due on the 16th. Um, and then I have a couple events here that have no forms due, which is fine. Um, but so what's really nice is for each calendar view, you can organize your calendar by multiple types of dates. So um, if you, for example, Let's say you're a mortgage broker and there's, you know, five or 10 even uh, different kind of key milestones that you need to keep on top of. You could actually have um, a number of different due dates that are all kind of related to the same event. So that's one way that you can kind of manage multi date events in the same place and kind of have all of them in one area. And then here I can see a master. I think I'm just organizing this by meetings or, or this might be by events. Yeah, event. And so just at a glance, this is starting to help me, um, you know, keep a sense of what I actually need to have done in terms of the forms, because uh, again, there's a lot of moving parts to a lot of these events, and this is really helpful. Um, I used to kind of keep these camps and events as these pages that had all the details in it, um, because again, every single event has uh, multiple pieces of paperwork, PDFs, email communication, and there's a lot of moving parts. And I was finding it really, really difficult to keep on top of, especially because they don't have a Google calendar or there's, there's no real digital life for these events. So I, I kind of have to make it for myself if I'm going to stay organized. So uh, here's an example of an event where I want to move this onto the calendar. So if I open this up, um, it's basically a district guider retreat. And so this was just sent out as an email. There's a schedule here, um, you know, September 13th to 15th. And so I've got this piece of information here. And what I want to do is actually drag that into the calendar now. So instead of leaving that as a page, I'm actually going to put that on the master calendar. So I make sure that I know um, exactly what is going on. I'm just going to drag it here. And then I'm going to adjust the event. So I know that that event itself happened in September, September 15th or 13th rather to the 15th. I can add a time. Um, this is just a past event, so it's not really, not really a big deal. Um, and that was, I'll just say an event. And I don't believe there was a meeting and then forms were due um, by August 1st. So I don't think I need a meeting event there, uh, but now I've got, yeah, multiple dates here. And so if I go to forms, do 
go back to August 1st, I can see that that's when that event was um, had its forms due. And then if I want to go to events itself, I can go back to September and see that there was the district event there. And I can turn on properties. If, if you want to kind of at a glance see, um, you know, what type of event you've got going on, you can do that. So this, this sort of thing has been really, really helpful uh, for being able to see multiple types, <laughs> events that have multiple um, sort of milestones or dates along the way. This might be one way to kind of deal with that. Uh, for example, like a, if you're a legal clinic or again, mortgage broker, um, there's going to be events with your clients that maybe you've got multiple touch points that you're, you're going to want to kind of group together for a single event. That's one way that you might want to handle it. Um, so I hope that's helpful for helping you understand calendars a little bit. Um, you know, one thing to note is that you, you can't combine calendars. So if this is a database, um, again, this is just my girl guide calendar. This doesn't include all my other, you know, editorial calendar or uh, client meetings or anything like that. So I, I do keep those in a separate database. So, but again, this, this has been a bit of a lifesaver in terms of being able to uh, see all of these events and all of the different uh, deadlines that are leading up to those events. So that's something to play with. Um, have a play with this calendar feature. Remember that each view can actually be grouped in a different way and you can choose uh, by what property. As long as you've got date properties already set up, you can choose how you want to organize that. Hope that helps.